Hi, welcome all. It's great having you here on this uh, video interview. Can you please introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Corey Gatch. I'm Michael Ellsworth. I'm Gabriel Stromberg. How did you uh, meet each other? Um, so Corey and I um, met through my wife, um, and we were all close friends, and Corey and I started a studio together. And during that time, we were big fans of Gabriel, who um, had a gallery and uh, was a practicing designer in Seattle. We all kind of lived in the same two-block radius. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, serendipity, I guess, brought us together to, okay. to form the studio in 2012. <laughs> Michael and I had a, a design firm before with another business partner, but we parted ways in, in 2012 and started the new company. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I worked for um, uh, the Henry Museum here, uh, Totokaya, which is a which is an online retailer. Um, I worked as a book designer, so I had lots of uh, experience yeah. to to kind of uh, as a background for this role. You know, it's like this local be um, team up, create something new. Yeah, yeah and it's funny. Our lead web developer Sean Cardinal lived down the street from us as well. It's like everybody at the studio was like a real organic um, okay. meeting. There's there's never really like resume submitted, et cetera. It was just kind of knowing each other and, and being um, fans of each other's work. Yeah. yeah. I think at one yeah. I think at one point everyone lived within like a three block radius from yeah. each other. Yeah. Two. Yeah. So well, you two still do. Yeah. <laughs> I I had a son two years ago, so I got I had to move out of the, the cool neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> More space. Okay. More space. <laughs> How did you came up with the name Civilization? That's a good question. <laughs> we were just kind of brainstorming names for the new the new the new company, um, and I think we saw it. We saw the word in in a book, and one of us said it. So, <laughs> so, and then, and we, we all were kind of like, Ooh, we like the way that sounds and feels. So. Mm. And I feel like really grown into it. It has kind of been this like, yeah. kind of roadmap for us because it, we're really about collaboration and really about this history and uh, built by civilization, thinking about like adding to this historic conversation of design and getting influence from, you know, it's, it's kind of this global uh, mm. archive or artifacts of design and just kind of picking and choosing. Uh, and even I, I remember the first meeting that we had, um, we all went around the table and just kind of talked about like why we were doing what we were doing and uh, what was kind of informing our work or our vision uh, for the studio that we were, we were wanting to form. And no one really talked about style or, or visual aesthetic. Everybody talked about the fact that um, the thing that we were most inspired about are all those times in history where designs really been used to kind of create social change and create impact in the world around us. So mm -hmm. that was yeah. a Deal. So civil just match that really well. So um, next to your like studio work for clients, you uh, organize um, the, the the design lecture in the Seattle Public Library. And can you tell a bit more about how this started and what you are aiming to achieve by organizing this events, these events? So it came out of. Um it came out of wanting to do something um, outside of the studio work, but that would inform the studio work. And really, uh, we work with a lot of students, and or we um, meet with a lot of students, and talk with a lot of students, and interview a lot of students. And we always ask, "Who's your favorite designer?" Similar to like how we we got started. And a lot of times, it's like looking at a deer in headlights. They just can't conjure up a name or someone that inspires them. And I thought that was a really odd thing so <laughs> we started to think about oh how can we connect with the community how can we solve this this problem that's going on in, in design education and um, the lecture series was born and, uh, okay. we were pretty impressed that when we sent out emails and inviting people to Seattle for a weekend getaway to speak at the library the response was very positive from some really leading world-class designers yeah. So our first season, we started with April Ryman, who we're really big fans of, um, Stefan Sagmeister, which was a shock that he even answered our email, and did, <laughs> and came out, a great client. And then we had David Carson, and uh, and then we had Ken Garland, who's one of our, our um, 
design heroes and the first thing is yeah. yeah, close to our hearts. Okay. We've always, we, each of us individually and um, as, you know, as a studio, we've always been kind of involved with creating events and around community and, uh, and sort of, you know, putting on shows. Like I played in bands, Michael's played in bands, Gabriel used to own a gallery um, that was in our neighborhood and had, a, you know, had events around that. Michael had a gallery before that. And then before we started Civilization with our old company, we used to have uh, monthly events around the, the art walk in Seattle. So we were kind of comfortable with, with putting on an event and getting people to, to come to an event, figuring out you know, how to make that happen. And so um, the design lecture series kind of became this thing that we was really very much us that we wanted to uh, put out there. So, mm. and we do it. <laughs> and I think from the beginning, um, it, again, I think we said this before, but it's one of the things that we all really connected on uh, is that we have uh, kind of the same design heroes, people like Ken Garland, April Ryman, Lance Wyman, uh, much like I think when musicians come together and they all find that they have similar, mm. you know, bands that they, that they like, mm. um, really connected on, on, on having the same heroes. And so, for me, the lecture series has been a really great excuse to, to hang out with yeah. people that I consider <laughs> heroes. Uh, to have dance parties with April Griman or go drinking <laughs> with Lance Wyman. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, pretty yeah. awesome. Dinner with Kenya Hara. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a good it's, way to to um, it's a good way to meet your heroes and like get the know get to know them a bit better, different than when they do a lecture and you're just visiting this lecture. You just you're hosting now them, and then you have like an, an other interaction with the with the speaker that you invite, right? So, <laughs> but is this is the setup of this of the of the design lecture then um, just a presentation, like they show all kinds of works, or do they do you ask the speakers um, uh, a specific topic to talk about, or how, what is the setup of the of the design lecture? The format's pretty open. Um, we give them an hour, and um, we let them do what they, they want to do. Um, sometimes, if they'll have two or three talks, they'll ask us which talk they would prefer, and we always lean towards the, the design for social responsibility or something like inclusiveness or something like community. But we leave it pretty open, and um, we tr trust the, the people that we invite to to um, give the talk that we think yeah. would be appropriate. Yeah. Um, in the last two years, though, the first year we didn't do this format, but the last two years we've invited um, a, another guest to have a conversation after the election. So that's that's been an interesting twist. Um, like we had a program and interview Paula Cher, and that was that was wonderful um, to see these two perspectives. Um, uh, our next lecture is uh, Jessica Walsh, and we invited out Kate Bingman Burt, um, who's a Illustrator and educator at Portland State University, and they both um, are really going to talk about um, being not only a woman in design, but being uh, kind of a young, younger designer and mm -hmm. new generation. We had uh, Marissa Janae Johnson from the Black Lives Matter movement, who was one of the people who you know, interrupted Bernie Sanders here in Seattle uh, when he was doing a rally interview. Uh, Emory Douglas, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. That'd be like that. Yeah. yeah, so you have uh, like this, first you have a presentation and afterwards you have like a dialogue between two people who are in the field and then um, have a discussion about related things. Of, yeah. yeah, yeah. And sometimes there's time for questions from the audience, but okay. <laughs> yeah. we've been running, yeah. running short on that. So, so but, and, <laughs> and then we have like the after party gatherings or the community that yeah. we engage yeah. and, and there's books, there's books for sale and signings and, you know, we want it to be, to be as inclusive as possible. Yeah, but it's um, the lecture, I don't know if that's clear, but the lectures are all free to the free and open to the public. So whoever can get a ticket in time, <laughs> the, yeah, the door is yeah. open for the Yeah. I ask because um, you, it's like 500 people that are in this room, more or less. And it's live, also live, uh, live streaming, right? So how did, yeah. how did that evolve that it's a live, that it has a live streaming? Is that like that came kind of by accident um so at first a little the, bit by necessity and by necessity <laughs> yeah. a little yeah. bit of both um the first year we didn't do a live stream and we did video interviews of everyone and we really haven't released that content yet um but planning to um and that just became this it was kind of a big production um to do the video mm -hmm. so 
and we weren't getting quite the the same intensity, but we the first year was like, oh, let's make this very like you had to be there in the moment because um, we're not trying to recreate Ted or any. Mm-hmm. But then the next year, um, a partner, Creative Live, which is a wonderful site in the, their headquarters here, um, contacted us and, and asked, oh, could we could we do a sponsorship where we do live stream? And they did. It was great. Um, and then this this because of that necessity, um, we continued this year. Yeah. Yeah, the saying about the tickets, you know, people can get the tickets. There's, we release a large portion of the tickets from the room when they're released, and then we save room for people who come because since it's free, some people don't come, and then mm. uh, and then that leaves people who are waiting, you know, at the door to get in. They could usually get a seat, but they've gotten so big that we're we've, with Kenya Harwood was the first time we actually had to turn people away. Yeah. Um, but the live stream, it enables people who didn't get a ticket to be able to watch and then people all over the world to be able to watch. So yeah, it's kind of like, right. let's, it's sort of a necessity locally for people who couldn't get in. And then there's a school, a school here, yeah, a school of visual concepts that hosts like a viewing party of the live stream too. So. Ah. And everyone asks us to like maybe a bigger venue because people get a little upset that they can't go. Yeah. But <laughs> we really love our library. It was designed by Red and Cool House. It's yeah. a beautiful group. Jokingly call it the House of Design in Seattle because it's just, you know, it's a beautiful building, beautiful auditorium. We really want to keep it in that, keep it in this kind of intimate setting, it's not that intimate, but, um, versus like town hall or a giant lecture hall. You lose that energy. Yeah. So, upcoming event with Jessica Wolf sold out like in one minute. Although it's free, it's like amazing, amazingly fast. How how did that feel? Like, were you surprised or? Well, at this point, I don't <laughs> want to sound totally cocky, but no, because like they all kind of go so fast, and, that, and we knew that there was such a like that is now that I keep asking people that question. That's why Jessica Walsh comes out of people's uh, is their answer right away, and um, overwhelmingly from students and um, yeah. and younger designers like who's favorite designer Jessica Walsh. Jessica Walsh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I wasn't really shocked, but it felt it always feels amazing, yeah. and I'm always. So, so grateful. I mean, I love I love that we uh, had to. I mean, I, I don't love that we had to turn away people for uh, Kenny Hara, but I mean, it's still the fact that someone like him draws that much interest. It's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's um, to yeah, just kind of be outside of the design world. I find it hilarious that you know people will come like on a Friday night to see like Carol Martin's. You know, um, it's like. For in our world, of course, that's amazing. But you know, if I if I tell any of my family or friends that are not designers, like who? Who's that? <laughs> I remember I remember walking April Griman into the library, and there was a line of people out the door going down the block, and it just felt so great. It was like a Bon Jovi concert. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, but that's that's really amazing that design and designers can they are so influential they and they are so visible all over the world with the work that they make and then so but so many people want to hear the stories that other designers have to tell yeah it, it feels really good that we get to celebrate these people who are so important to us yeah exactly so you invite your heroes and you can celebrate together and then you have like this great this great evening yeah. oh yeah and and we we've made a it's always an event the whole weekend. We always try to have like a lot of fun with them. And drink if they drink. And good food. And go yeah, shopping. Yeah, 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 exactly. Museums. Yeah, yeah. We took a little road with experimental jet set. That was, that was quite fun. Yeah. You know, went down to Portland and stopped and record shopped on the way. And it was, it was fun. And then we did a <laughs> podcast with them, live yeah. podcast with them. Ah, yeah. okay. It's your Siri, the design lecture Siri. Um, Gabriel, um, you also host this um, uh, podcast, Beyond This Point, which are sometimes live and sometimes in a just private interview. Um, when, when did this idea start and how did, it, how did this, the podcast evolve? Um, it, it came from a similar place uh, from as the lecture series did, uh, just wanting to create, kind of create community and connect with people. Um, I thought that uh, the format of podcasts is, I'm a really big fan, I thought it was a uh, a lot of people were doing some really cool things in this area, so I thought it might be something that was would be a natural extension of kind of the things that we were already doing. Um, but also, uh, you know, on the podcast we feature the, like graphic designers, but we also feature product designers, uh, business owners. Um, uh, we've had performers, dancers, yeah. 
And I know for me as a graphic designer, um, I love talking to other graphic designers and I, I learn a lot from my conversations, but I also um, can learn just as much or even more from talking to architects or people outside the space of design sometimes. And I think it all kind of connects all these different creative endeavors and, and spaces. And so um, a lot of times the conversations that we have are about process. Um, and I, one of my favorite, for instance, one of my favorite um, uh, podcasts we did was between uh, uh, Kate Wallach, who's a local former, she's a choreographer and a dancer, and uh, Maria Bianco, who is a, who's a business owner. And just hearing about how their two practices overlapped. And then in the end, kind of also connecting that to design. Mm -hmm. Another reason why it made sense for us to do a podcast is, like I was saying, uh, Michael and I have been involved in, involved in music. And so we know how to record stuff fairly well. And then we also have, we're connected with some really amazing engineers and producers and uh, that could help us actually make the thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. but uh, yeah, I have some editing that I have to do. Corey, Corey edits. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah we're behind a little of course, you you do so many things. So, but I, but in um, actually, I thought that the design lectures were also the podcast. Oh, so maybe that's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> we no, because you have a conversation about that. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> at, at first, I discovered the podcast, and then I discovered the people uh, behind it, and and so on. So that was a another way of finding you guys um which is great that's so that's that's um no but i thought then then i find this discovered the design uh, lectures and then i thought oh maybe it's the same but i and now i know that it's not but yeah <laughs> that's some good insight for we're working on our new web digital presence for all of this yeah and oh. there's some more conversation so that was some Interesting persona. Yeah, trying to have, figure out how to wrap it all under one kind of umbrella. We're going to be streamlining it, yeah. for sure. Yeah, which is challenging for us because we build websites and brands for um, a lot of clients, but doing your own, it's it's, it's hard to yes, see it with different, different fresh But yeah. I, I think, why, why would you change it? Oh, well, that, that's a question. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, um, while we researching you guys, it's like, it's really presented as something of their of your of your or that exists on their own, which is great. And then if you go if you are more interested, you can just listen to a podcast or do the see who is giving a talk. And then you can if you want, you can find further and then you go like go on and go on. It's like this great discovery of all the <laughs> little network it's like your network. It's your studio network of self-initiated projects and then you come to the design studio and that's like at least for me it was a really great experience so that's good feedback. That's <laughs> great feedback. that is really good to hear yeah i i feel similar with your project oh really i i, I followed the trail that was a pleasant surprise in the background you have like this amazing graphic work hanging <laughs> um which is in your new gallery which you just opened like uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and can you tell, you already told that um, uh, it was Gabriel, right? You had a, a, a gallery before? Right. And, and my oh. failed gallery. Oh. Yeah, I liked Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if mine was any less failed. <laughs> okay. but, uh, yeah, so it was, it was a kind of an interesting way that we got into the gallery. We were looking for new studio space for a long time. And we found this new in real estate in Seattle is a little, a little high right now. Heard ninth in the on the planet. Yeah, for rent. rent. So so rent's tough. Right. And you know we work with a lot of nonprofits and social entrepreneurs. So um, you know we got to keep the keep the <laughs> keep the rent low. Um, but we found this space that was a gallery before this, a, a wonderful gallery called Rock the Root. That was a kind of a Seattle staple. And um, the owner wanted to get out of the art world and is now um, working on saving endangered species. Besides the point. Um, so we found out that I was coming to rent and we talked to the landlord and he was, he was a little skeptical about a design studio moving in because he was like, I really want a gallery and we we're like, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so um, that's kind of how it started. And not that we didn't want to do that, 
because it, it was kind of a natural progression out of the lecture series and the podcast to show the work. Um, but it kind of accelerated the timeline a little bit to do that. Um, and we really needed a bigger space because we were in a, a 600 square foot studio with eight of us for, yeah, really tight. for a long time. And okay. it was how we are now, pretty much shoulder yeah. to shoulder. Um, so we came in, got the keys in September, did some renovations, and then um, we weren't going to open the gallery. We weren't going to have our first show till like spring, summer. But then the election results came up um, of the American presidency, and the day after the election, we were all teary-eyed and sitting in the studio and like, what are we going to do? And, um, and the next couple days, uh, we came up with the idea of, of reaching out to <clears throat> Milton Glaser and Mirko Illich about seeing if we could do uh, the Design of Descent show um, that they did originally in 2005 at the School of Visual Arts in New York. Um, reached out to them and it was, we found out it was already packaged up in the basement, um, which was nice. So we selected some pieces and figured out how to get it out here and then um, got their uh, permission to add to the show. And so the show, the new iteration is, is about 50% of that, that collection and then 50% of the show is, is really added. Um, so um, yeah, we, we opened, as you said, uh, the first Thursday of the month is an art block here. So we, we opened then and the very surprising response. We had 700 people the first night, which is a very small space. Um, wow. And then we, and we have people coming in every day and some student groups. And we have a middle school coming in tomorrow. We're doing some workshops. And um, yeah, some workshops. We're going to do a, a workshop on uh, creating manifestos and oaths and, uh, and a workshop uh, to do um, protest signs before the big uh, tax day protest. Okay. Which is coming up? Or well, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, April fifteenth. Okay. And and uh, oh. why why did you decide to bring this um, 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 exhibition now? Yeah, if there was ever a time for protest and dissent, here yeah. it's now. <laughs> right now, uh, we are very unhappy with the political climate. The um, our city is very unhappy with the political climate, and um, we wanted to show this. Uh, so the show, how we organized it, was a little different than the original show and the book. We, from the 60s to present day, as you walk around the gallery, it's a timeline, and we're showing um, the pieces that we have on display are really relevant now as they, as they were then. Yeah. And we wanted to know how there's just been this constant voice, this constant topics that keep popping up, and these are ways that the masters of graphic design have, have yeah. addressed these problems. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have Milton Glaser and Seymour Schwast and Grand Fury and Sons of His Death and uh, Paula Scher and Stefan Sagman, Sir Jessica mm -hmm. Walsh, James Victoria. Like, yeah. these are people who are, you know, masters in the fields and then they're showing they use their talents for this. Yeah. And the first piece in the show is Ken Darwin's First Things First, which is the manifesto. Yeah. So, at, um, um, your gallery is a. Is it's going to be like mostly about graphic design or are you also going to explore in the future um, different fields? Or you don't know yet? That's a good... <laughs> we, we don't know. We, we like the idea that there's not a lot of graphic design galleries, especially in the States. There probably might be an Amsterdam. Um, I don't know. But, uh, so we, we like that. And that's what we know. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, if we did decide to focus on just graphic design, I mean, we have so much that we could possibly yeah. feature. I mean, there's just so many amazing designers, past and present, and I'm sure future, that um, we would love to show. So. Yeah, exactly. But because also you can, you have this way of looking through the world as a, as a design practice, and um, that, that only gives you so much uh, possibilities in showing um, like how it's how graphic design is used all over the world. So, and what's oh. about the name? Non-breaking space. Yeah. Well, so, uh, a non-breaking space is actually a, a piece of code in um, in HTML. Uh, it's a character entity that basically prevents two words from wrapping to a new line. So 
um, they, it's, a, it, it's a space that doesn't break, yeah. a break a lot. So and there's, there's a metaphor there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I really love this idea of this digital language and the physical because all of these pieces I've only seen online, or maybe in a book, but never physically. So it's just it's it's surprising to see it in real life. And, uh, I just love that. Yeah. <laughs> And I think conceptually it connects to the idea of community. Yeah. In a, in a really interesting and unexpected way. Yeah. And everything we do for real life has three words, so it fit the criteria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, why are designers such a good um, uh, organizers? Because you organize so many stuff? I, I think we have a really good team. Yeah. 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 Totally. yeah. Um, our main organizer is not a designer by training, and she, Molly, Kirsty, yeah. brings this. Uh, she is very good at organizing. Mm -hmm. ah, she okay. has the heart. Of the designer, though. <laughs> I think I think if there is a if there is kind of a um, uh, a shared perspective that kind of links all of the events, it's this attention to detail. I think we all at the studio understand that everything from the tote the tote bag or the swag that we create or the merchandise to the way that we market, um, to the way that we interact with people. All of that counts. It's, it's all kind of, kind of linked together. Hmm. In one respect, I mean, each of the, the design lecture series and beyond this point and, you know, the gallery space, like, there kind of are places to, to play a little bit and experiment and kind of make, make something that, how we would want to make it. Yeah. You know? For, for us, too, I think another platform for it is accessibility. We want to really reach to people that are necessarily designers, but maybe on that, like, out of being designers a little bit, or creative thinkers, or, you know, dancers, makers, artists, that, like, oh, I, I know graphic design, but maybe not a practitioner, and then kind of pull them in, or even people outside of that. Yeah. And now it's politics, or activists, we've been bringing in. There's been a lot coming to the gallery, which is really exciting for us. Yeah, so uh, lots of people are, that you wouldn't expect to come into a gallery, they are now entering your gallery, or? Yeah, I'm really shocked, but like families are bringing their kids, yeah. <laughs> like it's, I really didn't think, I thought it was just going to be, you know, other graphic designers, or, you know, people, um, but we really engaged the public okay. at large. And we, we've got some really interesting press, there's a Real Change, which is a paper that um, helps homeless people like the they are low-income people as well it's like all the sales go to them mm -hmm. um, they did it they featured the, the show as a cover story and that was really touching to me because that was that's really helping on um, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah that's great because then you get you, yeah you get a lot of publicity but also you reach like complete other um, people who then will visit uh, your gallery and have a different experience of what graphic design is or can be and that's that, that's great how do all these self-initiated projects influence like your client work or your personal life how does it how does it work for you because it looks to me that uh, you are quite busy with all the big self-initiated projects how does that, how is <laughs> it not, uh, <laughs> not much time but I'm <laughs> well, I think it, it all informs each other for sure. Like you know, being able to sit down with Paul Cher and talk about design and over dinner, you know, is, is obviously inspiring. Um, I, I see these as is. I keep thinking about this as like when you're in school and you have extracurricular activities after school, like you're in band or you're in chess club or debate team. Kind of think of these as as those kind of extracurricular activities that help inform your education and for us it's we're constantly learning about design and by doing during the day and then the extracurricular activities being inspired and mm. learning no game elaborating oh i mean i know specifically the podcast has made me a better listener <laughs> uh, which in turn has uh Probably made me a, definitely made me a better designer. Okay. So I think I think um, we've been able to use uh, the work we've done for the design lecture series and beyond this point, and I mean maybe the gallery at some point, but um, to actually obtain some client work, some client work has come as a result of those things, and so 
being able to leverage that and the experience that we have and the expertise we've sort of developed from that um, with a client project has been really useful. Yeah. So, so all of these things keep us inspired too. Yeah. So. Just the last two months walking into a gallery before you go into work, like, you kind of <laughs> walk through it to get to the studio and it's just to be surrounded by this great work that, you know, yeah. it's wow, intrinsic yeah. inspiring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds amazing. Uh, no, but it, I, I can imagine that it works like all the different ways. Like you get personally inspired, but you get through the work, you get inspired and then you get clients get inspired. It's like works always together and then it also um, uh, makes you as a studio like that this is who you, this is uh, what civilization is that will end this like formal talk now with my neon five questions yeah. um, where I want to ask you like um, a single recommendation in five categories um, starting with a book go ahead Oh, a, a, a book. Um, well, uh, Kenya Hara's Design and Design is our. It's kind of like our studio bible. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we buy a copy for new designers when uh, they come on board. And um, when we recently, he was recently one of our lecturers, uh, so we got to host him here in Seattle. And uh, yeah, we're just we're huge, we're huge fans uh, of the way that he has kind of champion design thinking and all the work that he does from his exhibitions to his role as an educator. Uh, he's really kind of a, like a, a major mentor and hero for our studio. Okay. It's a great book. Yeah. yeah. It's a big book. <laughs> so I, I, for I, I, didn't, I didn't read it, but I, I will go to the shop tomorrow and, oh, and I'll order it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so um, events and which, not which, us. Not us. You, not you. You can recommend any event that doesn't matter what it is, but just an event where everybody should go. Or. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, LA Book Fair. We also really like uh, Design Week in New York, mm -hmm. ICFF, and all the all the pop up stuff around that. Mm -hmm. Is really yeah. wanted. Yeah. yeah, wanted design. Yeah, that's great. Food. Hmm. There, there was a time when we kept everyone kept getting bigger, bigger, bigger. We have we have a, we have a favorite a uh, uh, food truck, a burrito food truck, oh, which is right hard. around the corner. A burrito, burrito food truck. We're we're, we're in right now, so we kind of we're still developing our new food tastes for the for the neighborhood. But there, there's there's a there's a food truck pod that happens uh, a couple blocks away. That okay. seems like a from, yeah. But That's also, there's a, there's a restaurant here called Marjorie, yeah. uh, owned by a friend of ours named Donna Moody, and uh, we take all of our our lectures there to dinner the night before the lecture, and uh, yeah, it's kind of a tradition, and it's a really beautiful spot. Um, Very cozy and and great food. Okay, it's great. A special place. And a uh, movie or a television oh. or. <laughs> I just watched. Well, I guess we we'll all have our own TV. Atlanta, which is <laughs> an amazing television show, okay. and I, I think it's a really great um, American story. Uh, it's a, is it on Netflix or? It's on. I think it's on Amazon. Probably. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, it was uh, on the FX X now. Okay. Um, and, I, and I'm personally, it's nothing I've seen, but I'm really excited about seeing the, uh, the new design series called Abstract, yes. uh, one of which features uh, one of our favorites, Paul Cher. And I know it's like everyone probably already has heard about it, but I think it's up for Oscars and stuff, but you've got to see Moonlight. It's an amazing film. Yeah, okay. really, really good. Wow, that's great. And then finally, some miscellaneous, something from your life, just what pops up. To recommend. To recommend? Yeah. <laughs> the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art is one of my favorite places to go. Okay. It's tough. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 
don't know what's popping in my head because it's coming up is Art Basel in Hong Kong. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've gone the past two years and uh, it's coming up at the end of uh, March and I'm probably not gonna be able to go, so that's something that is, is worth going to if you can. Um, well, I know this probably comes out of the fact that we've just been working with them a lot and this is a kind of studio work, but um, we're all really obsessed with uh, a paper line uh, out of, also out of the UK called Color Plan. Oh, yeah. And I just want to talk about how much I just, sometimes I'll just sit around and look at the paper and <laughs> admire the different colors. Nice. That's true. It's wow, great. it's great. That's like you end with like the whole spectrum of colors. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. So, oh, my my, uh, my favorite color right now is mist, which looks like newsprint. It's kind of a, a yellowy gray. So sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. you. Awesome. Were you gonna do? A oh yeah. Do you want a little walkthrough of the studio? Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. do that. Cool. Yeah. Right, Molly, do you, do you want to be the tour guide? <laughs> Well, I'm gonna sign off. Thanks so much. Yeah. It was, it was, oh, uh, thank fantastic. you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, can you can you help me do the? All right. So, might need to edit this. But here is the '60s and '70s. So, first things first. Um, which is part of the original design of the center. And then we added uh, this Black Panther newspaper by Emory Douglas. Uh, and Seymour Schloss is anti-war posters. Richie Boston, Abbott, who is one of the first African Americans in, in advertising in the 60s. Um, down here we have a collection of stamps by Graphic Lee, and then um, a piece by Herb Blue Ballin, No More War. Can you, can you see it? Well? Yeah, yeah, I can see it definitely. Yeah, it's really cool. Wow, it's amazing. Well, and then back up. So here is we enter the 80s, 90s. Um, and then Silence Equals Death was an American um, activist group that was in response to the Reagan administration not addressing that AIDS was an epidemic. Um, we're big fans, and uh, we have a podcast with one of their founders. Uh, and we brought that in. And then the Gorilla Girls, who are also big fans of, is an activist group of women who wear gorilla masks and make commentary about the art world. Um, went into here. Uh, John Yates, American Bible Belt. Uh, great piece, very accurate. <laughs> and then more Seymour Schloss. And then we go into the 2000s and the present. <clears throat> Um, which is Milton Glaser Light Up the Sky poster, which is about the, uh, you could not protest during the Republican National Convention. And uh, the idea was to light up the sky with fireworks and lights. Um, and this poster was uh, about that. And then we have, um, how's that? Oh, um, the parody of the iPod, mm. the Iraq. And then that uh, Stop the Plant was by uh, Maybe Pirtle, uh, founder of Pentagram. And then um, we have the present, which, as I mentioned before, the James Victory Fuck Trump piece. Yeah. It's one of our favorites. Uh, then some of our work, uh, the Shout Your Abortion campaign, which is a digital platform and um, poster campaign to encourage courage in women to share their um, stories of abortion to help bring that uh, into political light, that it's not necessarily a negative thing, mm -hmm. or it doesn't happen. Um, and then here we have bad ombre and nasty woman, which is some of the words that uh, Trump used during a debate with Tony Clinton. Yeah. Um, that's by Plaza Magazine out of Portland, Joshua Berger and Nico Proleus. Um And then under that is uh, Stand with Sandy Rock, which is by uh, Portland illustrator Jason Sturgill. We're big fans of in these. Uh, Shirts, all the proceeds went to Standing Rock. And then up in the windows, we have the experimental jet set all purpose protest poncho. Yeah. Yeah, which is cool. And uh, yeah, one of my favorites. Oh. I lost recording. Um, and then we did this, uh, they, we worked with the experimental jet set on the shirt. 
Um, they did this originally as a poster, Mankind is Unkind Man, the weed eater quote. And uh, we worked with um, a client of ours, older brother, that makes sustainable um, fashion products. And uh, this shirt is made out of corn and bamboo. It's totally biodegradable. Wow. It's super soft. So we're, we're selling these. We have 30. We made 30 of them. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so we're starting to add some some products uh, collaborations to the to the studio. A little a little store over here, I guess, of sorts, some tote bags. And, yeah, and then I'll give you a give you a quick tour of the the studio. Here's our our poster collection, and then the, everyone's okay. And then we have these this, our library. These are. Um, Walls, these bookshelves are on wheels, so we can move them back and forth for the gallery. Yeah. Yeah. So, there, there we are. <laughs> Great. Wow. Looks amazing. Thank you. Okay. All right. And hopefully we'll see September. Yeah. Fingers hopefully. crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be <laughs> great. Yeah, that would be really nice.